Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this live session in which I'm going to talk about Python Pandas library. So I'm sure most of you have heard about the Pandas library in Python and it is an integral part of data analysis and serves as the building block of data analysis and data science. So let us take a look at the agenda for this session. But before that, let me get a quick confirmation if you guys can hear me or not. So if I'm audible to you guys, please type yes in the chat box. And now that I can see a lot of confirmation, let us go ahead and take a look at the agenda for this session. So first of all, I'm going to start with the basic introduction to pandas in Python, followed by data frames and series with examples. And then we will see how we explore the data using pandas. Moving further, we will learn pandas operations, merging, grouping, reshaping, etc. And then I will discuss time series and categorical data. After this, I will talk about plotting with pandas. And finally, to sum up this session, I will tell you about reading and writing files using pandas. I hope you are clear with the agenda. So let's go ahead and take a look at what exactly is pandas. So pandas is a Python library which is used for data manipulation, analysis and cleaning. And Python pandas is well suited for different kinds of data such as we can work on tabular data with heterogeneously typed columns. We can work on ordered and unordered time series data, arbitrary matrix data with rows and column labels. We can work on unlabeled data and we can also work on any other form of observational or statistical data sets. Now I'm going to tell you how you can install pandas on your systems guys. It's very easy to install Python pandas. You just go to your command line or terminal and just type pip install pandas or if you're working on an IDE such as PyCharm, you can just simply type in pip install pandas in your terminal over there or you can just open the project interpreter and add the library over there. Since we are going to work on Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to tell you how you can install Python pandas on Anaconda. So you just have to do one thing. So I'll just show you guys how you install Python pandas on your system. You open the Anaconda prompt. We'll wait for the prompt to set up. So you type conda install. It's already there in my system because I have already installed pandas since I have already worked on various data analysis projects and it's a very integral part of it because to work on a data set to read a data set you require pandas and it's just that you cannot work without pandas if you are working with any data related project. So this is how important Python pandas actually is. I'm going to tell you a few applications of pandas as well. So first of all, you can just say that Python pandas is an integral part of data whichever project you're working on. So you can work on economics. You can uh, use uh, Python pandas for stock prediction. You can use it for recommendation systems. Then you can use it on neuroscience and statistics. Also you can use it for it. And then there is advertising so many data coming from different platforms. You can just analyze the data using pandas, you know, clean the data for irrelevant, you know, inconsistencies in your data. You can do that using pandas. And then you can use it for analytics as well. That's the very basic use of Python pandas that I can think of. So right now that we know how pandas actually is in Python programming and what it is used for. Let's go ahead and take a look at the very integral part of pandas that is data frames and series. We'll wait for this to install guys. Meanwhile, I'll just tell you what are data frames and series guys. So data frame is a two dimensional and the size of the data frame is mutable potentially heterogeneous data or we can call it heterogeneous tabular data. So the data structure which is data frame also contained labeled axis which is rows and columns and arithmetic operations align on both rows and column labels. It can be thought as a dictionary like container for series objects. Now what exactly is a series guys? So a series or a panda series is a one dimensional labeled array capable of holding data of any type which is integer, can be string, float, Python objects, etc. And the access labels are collectively called index and Panda series is nothing but a column in an Excel sheet. So let's just take a look at a few examples and then you'll be able to understand this better what I'm talking about like Pandas and series what exactly they are. We'll be working on an example now. So I'll just take it to Jupyter Notebook guys. So we have already uh, created a Jupyter Notebook. If you are not familiar with Jupyter Notebook guys, we have a full tutorial on how to use Jupyter Notebook all the cheat sheet and everything. So you can just refer to those in our Edureka YouTube channel. 
So since I have already installed uh, Python pandas, I'm just going to import pandas as pd. Run this. I'm not going to face any problem uh, running this command because I have already installed pandas. Okay. So what this command will do over here, it's going to install the package, the latest release of pandas for me. I think that's why it's not running. Okay, we have our first statement over here and we have successfully imported pandas as pd so i'm using the alias as pd i hope you guys know what alias is so let's just say i'm importing this library so alias is going to be this one that is pd so for importing i'll tell you why i'm using this now if i want to create a data frame i'll just use df as my variable name for data frame so i'm going to use the alias now when i type tab over here okay i'll just so this is how i can use my alias to create a data frame so this is just to tell you how you use an alias. Now I'm going to show you how you can create a series and a data frame. So first I'm going to okay, I'll have to import numpy as well because I'm going to use it to create a null value. All right, so df is equal to I'm going to make a series. So I'll just write it as s. All right, series, and I'm going to pass a list of values. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to use my numpy now to create a null value like eight, nine, and one more value. Let's say 10. So it's going to create a series now when I print S. So we have a series which has indexes which are already there, and all these values that I pass inside a list. So this is how you create a series in Python guys using pandas. After this, I'm going to tell you how you create a data frame. So for that also, I'm going to tell you how you create a data frame using a dictionary object and how you can create a data frame using series as well. So now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to create a data frame by passing a numpy array with a daytime index and label columns. So I'll take one variable, let's say date or dates. I'll just type it as D. And I'm going to take pd dot. So we're going to take the date range. And after this, I'm going to pass a few values. Let's say 2020. And I'm going to pass values like we're in the month of March. So I'll just write it as March. And after this, I'm going to take periods, which is equal to let's say 10. So this is my date range, guys. Okay, I have an invalid syntax, right? should work fine now so when I print D over here so I have all these values in a date range format after this what I'm going to do is I am going to take one data frame which I am going to take as DF for obvious reasons to make it clearer and I'm going to take data frame and inside this I'm going to pass a few values so first of all I'm going to take a few random values so I'm going to use np dot random dot random number and inside this, I'm going to pass 10, let's say 4. And now I'm going to get the index values as D. And I'm going to have to pass a few more values, which is columns. So I'll pass the columns as a list. And I'm going to take, let's say, four columns. So I'm just going to take, okay, wait a minute A, A, B, C, D. All right. Do we have any errors? No. So now I'm going to print my data frame. So I have a data frame, guys, which I have created using, you know, passing a NumPy array. And I have a daytime index with labeled columns, which are A, B, C, and D. This is my index, guys. And I have all these random values using NP array. So this is how you create a data frame, guys. It's just a simple example. And I'm going to show you how you can create a data frame by passing a dictionary of objects that can be, you know, converted into a series also. So I'll take, let's say again, df is equal to pd dot data frame. And I'm going to pass a dictionary over here now. So I'm going to take a few values first of all. So first value is, let's say a. Now after this, I have to pass something, right? Okay, I'm going to write, let's say a list of one, two, three, and four. After this, my next value is going to be, let's say b. And I'm going to pass a 
timestamp let's say and for timestamp I'm gonna use the same I have used over here 2020 0301 I've used the right and after this I'm gonna pass one more value let's say C and I'm going to use a series now a series object and inside this I'm gonna pass one and the index is going to be let's say a range all right index is equal to a list with a range of four because we have only four values over here we don't want any null values and after this I have to type in the data type as well the data type of the series guys so for that I use d type is equal to let's say float 32 all right after this I provide my next value which is d now for d I'm going to use uh, a numpy array and for this I'm going to pass a value let's say not 3 let's say 5 multiplied by 4 and let's take the d type is equal to integer 32 yes all right now I take my final value which is going to be e and inside this I'm going to pass a, a data frame or we're going to use the categorical object guys we're going to talk about this later on in the session so don't worry I'm just showing you how you can create a data frame using all these objects that we have at our disposal guys now instead of test and train we can just call it as true or false it doesn't matter we are taking categorical object so it has to be either true or false or it can be zero or one but it has to be decisive in a way that there are only two values so i take another value and for this let's just say i give the value and you right so our Dictionary is done over here. So we have created our data frame guys. There's no error. Now when I print this So we have our data frame guys. So a b c d e and f So we have all these values using different data types or we can call it objects as well So for that also we can check the data frame and we just write d types and it's going to give us all the data types that we have so we have date timestamps over here integer float integer category and an object because I have used a string over here that's why it is giving us an object but in the new release that is python 1.0.0 it's not going to be an object it's going to show you it is a string so don't worry guys and we have already made a video on python pandas 1.0.0 with all the features that have come with the new release the new stable release released last month you can check that out as well to check for the new features that we have come across so now that we have done this let us take a look at the next topic that we have which is how to view data so viewing data is basically you know how you actually look at the data or how you're gonna look at the data using pandas library so we'll just jump right to Jupyter notebook guys and I'll tell you what kind of functions or all those things you have at our bay that we can use to view our data so we'll do one thing first of all we have data frames already that we have over here so I'll do one thing I'll just change it to df1 so that we have different data types or I'm sorry different data frames guys I'll run this this and this as well and when I check for df dot d types should be different guys because we have already made a data frame using that all right it's not so I'll run all the wait So I'll do one thing I'll restart and run all the cells so that we have two different data frames so first of all the first very basic thing that you can do for your data frame is to use I'll just tell you guys you write df dot head so what this function is going to do is give you the first five values inside your data frame or the first five rows and similarly for the last rows you can use the tail method so this is how you get the first and last values inside your data frame 
so it's going to display all the five values that you have at your beginning and the end of your data set after this we have df dot index so what this will do is it will give you all the values from your index and similarly we have df dot columns which is going to give you all the columns from your data frame so this is how you view your data guys and then we have data frame dot to numpy which is going to give you a numpy representation of the data so i'll just tell you how you can do that so i'll just write df dot to numpy wait a second guys yes so i'm going to create a numpy array using this this i actually created a numpy array and for df our data frame of all floating point values data frame dot to numpy is actually fast and does not require copying the data so it is a very best deal for we have and then okay i'll just remove this i don't want this and then we have data frame dot describe which is going to give you somewhat like this which is going to give you the count the mean the standard deviation minimum 25 percent 50 percent 70 percent and maximum so these are all values using the describe you can have which is going to give you an idea or a perspective of how your data is actually is and what kind of calculations are already there that you can think of then we have sorting by an axis we can sort our data using an axis so for that you have to just write can okay, just show you guys you just have to write df dot sort by index and inside this you you have to give the value of the axis i'll just give one and then let's say ascending you want it to be ascending no i'll just write it as false so it has given me the data frame by sorting the index similarly i can sort it by the columns as well or i'm sorry sorted by values so i'll write it as values and i want to give the value as say values and i'm going to give the value as let's say by i want to sort it by c it has sorted the values depending on c so this is how you sort your data frame guys and now that we know how we can actually look at our data i'm going to tell you how you select particular values inside your data guys i'm going to show you how you select a single column from your data frame so we'll write df it's very simple guys to get a value from your data frame using only a single column you can write a or let's say c so it's going to give all the values from c over here it has actually given you frequency it has given you name data type as well so this is how you actually get a single column from your data frame now let me show you how you can slice the rows as well so for that we're going to use the slicing if you have actually worked on list comprehension so we have slicing the data over here we are going to follow the same principle here as well so i'll just write df now i want my first starting from my first value to third value so it has given me only three rows starting from the zero row, and it has given me third row and it does not actually include the third row because it starts from zero so i've been giving three values if i write six over here i'm going to get the sixth value but it's not going to be at the sixth row because the first row over here is going to be zero row. I hope you understand this guys. So I have shown you how you can slice your data, you know, to get particular number of rows. Now let me tell you how you can uh, select the data using the labels guys. So for that you have to use df dot. There has to be location loc and inside this you're going to pass the values by labels guys. All right. So let's pass D that is and zero so let's see what the output is guys all right so we have got all the values using the label that is d over here which we have passed over there in uh, our previous section where we have declared the data frame and i'm sure this is visible to you guys now the next thing is uh, selecting data on a multi-axis by label so what we'll do is we'll write df dot loc and after this we write hyphen and we are gonna create let's say a and we're gonna pass c right so it's gonna give me the values accordingly which i pass over here so instead of a i can write b or i can write d so this is how you can select multi-axis using labels guys and i have written this over here so i can just write let's say zero to three let's see what happens oh we have an error guys you cannot do this 
So we'll now move on to the next topic that we have is showing label slicing both endpoints are actually included. So how do we do that? So instead of this we can just let's say copy this paste it over here and copy this paste it over here remove this so this is just to show you guys how you can work with it i'm very certain that the data that you work on is not going to be like this it's going to be very complicated so this is just to give you a perspective as a beginner how you can work with pandas now I'm gonna tell you how you can reduce the dimensions of the returned object as well. So for that you just type one thing guys you Remove all this Get just one value and this is gonna give you the column number at over there And this is how you get the values inside a data frame So moving on, let's say we want to get a scalar value. So for that we just write Okay, let's say D zero all right, let's see if it works we're getting the same values guys only from the zero throw for getting the fast access to a scalar you can just write as a df instead of loc you can just write at okay we have an error guys i'll just remove this and let's see if it works yes so i'm getting the exact value at the zero throw at the column number c now i'm going to tell you how you select a value from using the position inside your data frame so for that we use df.iloc all right so let's say three okay so i'm getting the all the values from third column and similarly we can slice the data you know you can just get it like three to five all right and we can add more values to this like zero to two so this is how you select the values from your data frame guys now we have boolean indexing as well inside our data frames so i'll just tell you quickly what it is so for that you just write df now i'm going to check if df column number a let's say this is interesting guys so it has given me all the values inside a where a is greater than zero if I write here, let's say two, I have no values because none of the values are greater than two. So this is how you can get the Boolean indexing. This is uh, actually important when you're applying functions to your data frame guys. So moving on, let's uh, take a look at another method, which is is in method. I'll just tell you how it works guys. So it's basically is to check if the particular value inside your data frame is in there or not. Now there's one more thing we can set new values inside our data frame we can set a new column which automatically aligns the data by the indexes so for that we can make the series and we can set the values by label we can set the values by position and we can set the assigning with a numpy array as well and the result of the settings will actually align with the data frame where a new operation with the setting can be followed where you can simply align the data frame with the existing data frame now let's go ahead and take a look at the next topic that we have which is handling the missing data inside your data frame so let's jump right to it guys we'll go to jupyter notebook and we'll work with our missing values now so pandas primarily use the value np.nan to represent missing data it is by default not included in the competitions and we're going to see the missing value right now so first of all you have to re-index i mean you have to do re-indexing which is going to allow you to change add delete the index on a specified axis so which is going to return a copy of the data as well all right i'll just take df2 is equal to df dot re-index so this is how i'm going to do the re-indexing guys so index is equal to let's say d zero to four yes i'm going to get the columns after the read indexing which is going to be equal to list of df dot columns and i'm going to add one more column which is going to be let's say e all right now what i'm going to do is i'll do loc i'm going to check a few values so instead of dates i've taken d guys so d of zero and 
d of 1 at e is equal to 1. Now let's check what is df2 guys. We have two null values over here. So this is how I'm going to show you how to handle missing values inside your data frame. So we have done re-indexing. So first of all, I'm going to check for null values. So we have true over here and we can get the count as well is null and we count these null values. All right. Right now we are going to drop a few columns. So we are going to drop the NA that is the NA values. So as you can see from our data frame, all the values that had null values are dropped. Actually, the whole column has been dropped. Or we can do one thing, fill in the missing data guys. Just do one thing. Okay, check DF2 we have. So we can do one thing. We can fill the missing values and we are going to provide some value. Let's say value is equal to two, right? So we have actually filled the value with some of the value wherever there is a missing value. We have given a value that is going to fill over there. So this is how you get or you know check for all these uh, missing values inside your data frame. After this, you can now actually get a Boolean mask where values are any n, which is null. So for that you do pd dot okay is any df2 so this is going to get you a boolean mask which i've already told you how you can check using df dot is null same thing but different processes to run this now let us move ahead and to the next topic that we have which is pandas operations guys pandas operations are nothing but a few operations that you can apply on the data frame or any other pandas object so we have descriptive statistics that we can apply. We can apply functions. Histogramming is there and string methods is also there. So I'll tell you what histogramming is when we are talking about it. So let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook again, guys. I'll tell you how you can actually work with pandas operations. So first of all, I'm going to tell you a basic operation, which is that is a descriptive statistics. So it's going to give us all the mean values. Similarly, we can get one value like df dot mean provide one value over there so this is how you get it guys or we can write it as two right all right so this is how operating with objects that have different dimensionality and need alignment in addition panda automatically broadcast along the specified dimension so for that let's make a series i'll tell you just how it works pd dot series uh, give it a few values let's say one two three np dot n a n five or i'm sorry four five and then give the index value the index is going to be dates and let's just shift all this two places right we have made an error guys length of pass value is six and index implies ten so we have to uh, actually put more values. So write six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Now when I print S over here, we have all these values. Now we can do one more thing. So we write it as df dot sub, and we pass the S over here, which is our C's, and we make an axis. Write it as index so we have operated with objects that have different dimensionality and the needed alignment so in addition pandas actually helped us automatically broadcast the specified dimension so now i'm going to talk about applying functions to the data so we already have data frame let's see what we have so we have this data frame guys so what i'm going to do is i am going to apply a few functions so first of all i'm going to use the apply method over here and let's see what all do I have? Let's just check. We have absolute, absolute import, all, all close, a max, a minimum, angle, any append, all these functions that I can apply on this. So let's say we have come some. Let's see what this does, guys. All right.
so this is how it works now let's apply a few more functions guys so I'll write lambda x so we are talking about lambda functions here I'm sure most of you must be aware of the lambda functions that we have in Python if you don't have any prior knowledge on lambda function guys there is a full tutorial on how lambda function works in Python guys so this is how we applied lambda function to get the subtraction between the x max and x minimum all right for all the columns we have subtraction between all these values so this is how we apply functions to our data guys now i'm going to talk about histogramming so histogram is a representation of the distribution of data so this function we have which is matplotlib.pyplot.hist on each series in the data frame resulting in one histogram per column so what we do is uh, we'll make a series and it's going to give us value counts for histogramming how do we do that actually so we can just write as, as dot value counts right let's see if it works right we have one value for each so this is how we get or do the histogramming with our data guys now i'm going to talk about the string methods so series actually is equipped with string processing methods in the string attribute that actually makes it easy to operate on each element of the array so let's just move ahead with the example so i'll make a series guys pd dot let's say series and inside this i'm going to pass a few string values so i'm going to start with eddie reka write python next let's write jupiter give it a few null values as well to make it a little or slightly different from perfect all right so give it a few values let's say football and looking at the current scenario let's write vault so we have a series over here guys now what we'll do we'll take or use the string methods so i'm gonna make it all to lower which are already lower so i'll make it up to upper guys upper letter words so everything we have changed using the string methods inside our C, uh, panda series these are all the operations that you can perform on pandas guys so let's move ahead to the next topic that we have which is merging so in merging we are basically going to merge two data frames together so we have two functions which is concat and join so concat pandas objects along a particular axis with optional set logic along the other axis it can also add a layer of hierarchical indexing on the concatenation axis which may be useful if the labels are the same or overlapping on the past axis number so let's take a look at the example for this so we have our data frame i'm going to use pd dot data frame give it a few values let's say np dot random dot random number from let's say 10 and 4 all right so we have all these values now what i'll do is i'll break it into the pieces so how to do that so let's say i write it as df2 is equal to df from first to third row the next one is df from third to let's say seventh row and then we have df from seventh to the end of the data so this is how i am going to break it into the pieces now when i write it as df2 we have three data sets now i'm going to all right now i'm going to use the concatenation function using concat all right i'm gonna concatenate df2 so this is how i have concatenated the missing pieces not the missing pieces the several other pieces together using the pandas concat function now let's talk about the join function that we have so for this basically i'm gonna tell you how you can uh, do the left and right join so for the left join i'll write left is equal to pd dot data frame and let's see 
first value let's say a give it a few values let's say one two and then say b we have three four all right we make the for the right as well so i'm just co gonna copy all this paste it over here okay i'm just going to write it as d this is going to be let's say c and change a few values so we have left and right and i'm going to just type left and then we get the output for right so i'm going to join all these two using the join function so for that i'm going to use the merge function and inside this let's say left we have right and on is equal to i'm gonna join it at uh, let's say a let's see how it works okay it doesn't so we have a key error which is a so i'll change it to a guys so we actually joined using the merge function over here and another example that i can think of is uh, let's say we have left and right if we can change the values differently and we can just group them together now what i'm going to talk about is grouping guys so how you do the grouping of different data inside your data frame using pandas first of all for that you have to split the data into groups based on some criteria that you have and then after that you apply some functions on them and then later on you can combine the results into a data structure so first of all you have to get a data frame guys so let's see we have a data frame over here so we can actually group it by let's say right i'll just write group by let's say a and i'm just gonna sum right we have an error guys so we have a key error that is a because we don't have over there so i'll write it as let's say two all right we don't have two as well we have a key error we don't have two over there because it's not a string value it's an integer value so we have our values right over here so we have grouped the data using the column that is number two now we can actually group the data by multiple columns and form a hierarchical index so for that i'll just copy this guys or over here only i'll just do one thing two and let's say three so this is how you actually combine multiple columns to form a hierarchical index but here again we don't have actually categorical values for these columns if we had we'd be able to do that you know if we had like let's say true and false it is going to have um, created a hierarchical index which will have different values for true columns and for false columns so that's how you do the grouping or that's where you actually need grouping using pandas now let's move ahead and take a look at the next topic that we have okay we have already talked about operations then i have talked about merge where we have talked about concat and join and then i've talked about splitting the data how you apply the functions and then combining the results together merging we have talked about grouping now i'm going to talk about stack and pivot table so what exactly is a stack guys in pandas i'm sure most of you must have heard about some of the definitions of stack so i'm going to tell you about this with perspective of pandas library here so the stack function is used to stack the prescribed levels from columns to index and it returns a reshaped data frame or a series having a multi-level index with one or more new innermost levels compared to the current data frame so you're going to understand this with an example so i'm just going to take a let's say my tuple is equal to i'm just going to take a list and inside this let's see we have values and we provide or we get two lists over here a list inside a list guys so let's take a few values take one two three four five and then again let's say six seven eight nine and ten 
or we'll add few more values guys let's say 11 12 and 13 over here i will add few more values let's say 17 18 and 19 so we have our tuple i'm going to create one more variable index so we'll have multi index so from tuples inside this i'm going to pass my tuple pass the names as well so the names are going to be let's say first and second so we have our index now i'm going to create the data frame guys so for this we write pd dot data frame and inside this i'm going to pass a few values np dot let's say random dot random number so we have eight values and two columns all right so and the index is going to be index and columns is equal to a and b all right we have an attribute error guys i made a mistake so there's no error now and i'm going to make one more data frame so inside this i'm going to pass this value now i check my data frame so i have reshaped my data frame with this first and second and all these values now we're going to talk about the stack method guys so which compresses a level in the data frames columns so we're going to do one thing we're just going to do what df2 dot stack right this is an attribute arrow so this is how we stack or compress a level in the data frames column guys and with a stack data frame or series having a multi index as the index inverse operation of stack is unstacked by which default it's gonna unstack whatever you have done with using stack so we'll do df2 dot stack and this is how you unstack now we'll talk about the pivot tables guys oh wait let's put it inside a variable let's say a All right, so this is how you unstack guys we're getting different values there now we're going to talk about the pivot tables that we have in pandas so it is nothing but the levels in the pivot table will be stored in multi index objects on the index are columns of the result data frame so we'll take a look at one example guys which is going to be pretty clear so we'll take df again pd dot data frame and inside this we're going to take a few values or we're going to take a list inside a dictionary so let's go with a few values let's say one or let's say a all right so we write a b c d Well, we'll remove a few values over here multiply it to 3 now we take another value which is going to be b and for this we're going to take a list again so let's say multiply it to 4 take another value let's say c now and inside this uh, we're going to pass a few values again so we're going to pass six values so let's write p p and p q q and q multiply it to two because we want the number to be 12 and now d is going to be np dot random dot 
random number and the number we want is 12 and we take one more value e and we take the same values for this as well random dot random number 12 no errors i guess so we have an invalid syntax guys so we forgot to add a comma over here and here and here All right so i think it should work fine now without any errors so we have printed the data frame over here guys so this is how it looks now we can produce pivot tables from this data very easily guys the very reason of creating this data frame was to get the pivot tables now what i'll do is i'll just write pd dot pivot table and i'm going to pass df over here all right df and the values is going to be let's say d and index is equal to a and b and columns let's say is equal to c so this is how you create a pivot table guys now that we are done with pivot tables uh, let me talk about the next topic that we have which is time series and categoricals so we have done reshaping merging grouping as well now we're going to talk about the time series and categoricals. So Pandas has simple, powerful and efficient functionality for performing resampling operations during a frequency conversion, which is, for example, converting secondly uh, data into five minutely data. And this is extremely common in, but not limited to financial applications. So we're going to take a look at a few examples. And for categorical data, data that you collect can be either categorical or numerical. So numbers often don't make sense unless you assign meaning to those numbers. So for categorical data is when numbers are collected in groups or categories and categorical data is also the data that is collected in an either or yes or no situation. For example, we have zero or one. We have true or false. So that's going to be the category over there. So let's take a look at a few examples to understand this guys, the time series and categoricals. So we'll take a look at a few examples for time series. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I am going to make a time series guys. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll convert the data into five minutely data. So it's very common guys. So I'll just take the range first of all. So we'll take the dates. All right, I made a mistake. I'll just cut this. So I'll just run this again. We'll get one more column. And now what I'll do is I'll make one variable using the PD dot date range. Yes. And I'm going to provide the range as let's say 2020 zero 01 or zero three zero one we want the periods is equal to hundred and let's say frequency is equal to s all right let's print dates okay so we have dates over here we'll just remove this for now so now we take one more uh, variable let's say ts is equal to pd dot i'm going to take a time series and inside this i'm going to use np dot random and random integer which is going to be 0 to 500 and the length is of dates and then we have index is equal to dates so we have okay we have number attribute no random random all right We have an unsupported date time. So I'm going to have to change this over here. So we'll write it as let's say three one or we're gonna write three three twenty twenty. Right, so let's see if it works now. It doesn't. So we are getting the unsupported D type. Okay, so we just mention a few more stuff over here. So we'll write it as zero 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 zero. 
So I think I figured out the problem over here. So I've changed this to the this format and now I'm going to add one more parenthesis here and remove this one. And now I'm not getting any errors guys. So I'll run it again. Right. So now what I have to do is I will have to make a few changes to that TS, which is time series I've made. So I'll write it as TS dot resample. And I want to make it to five minutes, right? And I have to sum this. So no errors there guys. So now I'm going to do the time zone representation. So for that, I'm going to get one more. Okay, I'll just copy this guys, this little change to this only. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here. And here, I have to make a few changes. That is 0, 0. The rest, everything will going to be fine. And we'll change this to 5. Alright. So now we make another timestamp. And we just use pd dot series and inside this I'm going to use np dot random dot random number and the random number is going to be the length of dates and dates over here All right so now when I print timestamp I'm getting the output as some like this so this is how you get the time zone representation guys so you're getting the date the time and everything and uh, the data type is float 64 and then you can also get the UTC as well. So for that, I'll just write TS UTC and we just write timestamp dot TZ localize and we get UTC, right? It's UTC. Now I'm going to print this. So we get the UTC as well. So this is how you create the time zone representation. And now after this, I want to show you how we can convert to another time zone. So for that, we don't have to do anything. We just write TS dot, all right, TS UTC dot TZ, which is time zone convert. And we write US Eastern. So we have converted into the US time zone and converting between time span representations. Also, we can do that. Let's just say that's your exercise. So you have to convert between the time spans representations so that you'll be able to understand this better for that. You have to, you don't have to do anything. You just have to take the date range. The pH is going to be five and then you write the frequency instead of S you write it as M. The rest all is going to be the same guys. Okay. I'll just do it here as well. Just copy this. Paste it over here instead of S, it's going to be M. We'll have to remove this. All right. Now I make the timestamp, which is going to be the same, guys. Now print the timestamp. This is how we convert. Or after this, we take one more variable, let's say PS, and I'm going to to period All right now when I print PS over here this is the output I get so the frequency is M I've changed the frequency and now I can just convert it to timestamp guys Let's see where it is this is how you create it into a timestamp now converting between period and timestamp enables some convenient arithmetic functions to be used so for that we have period range and all those things that you can add now moving on to the next topic that is categoricals so for that let me just take one more data frame guys so i'll write it as df is equal to pd dot data frame now i'm going to take a few values inside this uh, dictionary the first is going to be let's say id and now i'm going to pass a list with a few values precisely six. So I'm going to use six values over here. Now my next topic is or the next key is let's say raw grade or just grade we'll write. 
so we're going to write a b c let's say again the guy is getting b and this one's getting a so we have five and one more let's say one guy has failed so we have our data frame let's print this okay so we have our data frame what i'm going to do is i am going to get the grade right so we'll get the grade is equal to df grade now this is going to be the category i'm going to make all right now we print df grade so we have grades like a b c b a e now i'm going to rename the categories to more meaningful names so what i'll do is i'll make the change over here only so i'll write cat dot categories and i'm going to write the categories as let's say good instead of pass fail i'm just going to write very good and then there is excellent all right so we have very good very bad and excellent all right we have an arrow guys there's something we have done so we have new categories needs to have the same number of items as the old categories so how many categories do we have over there right, let's just copy this So we have categories four. So we're gonna have to make four categories, guys. So I'm just going to add good as well. Uh, there shouldn't be any arrows. Now what I'll do is I'll just set the categories. So I'm gonna set the categories now. Let's say here I'm gonna to have to give uh, six values, guys. So right, very good. Let's say bad. Very bad. Medium good, very good. Any sort of categories I have to give over here. So I'll just write. very bad good and let's say medium all right so after this i have set the categories as well now i'll just write df great okay so we have good very bad then we have very good very bad and good and then we have any and because we have not given any other category for that and we have the five objects so we are getting very good bad very bad good medium so that's how you use the categoricals in pandas guys now i'm going to talk about plotting using pandas so that's going to be very simple guys for that i'm going to have to import one more library that is matplotlib dot pyplot I'm gonna use it as plt all right same thing goes with this as well all right this is going to be by plot all right so there should not be any errors now okay so uh, i will close all now i'm gonna make one series guys 
and inside the series I'm gonna provide a few random values like np dot random dot random number until let's say thousand or let's say five hundred or yes five hundred and the index is equal to pd dot date range and I'm gonna take the date range as one three twenty twenty and let's take the periods is equal to one thousand wait we have to take it as five hundred because we have five hundred values over there I hope no errors yes now I'm gonna take the timestamp and we're gonna get the come sum all right now ts dot plot So we have a plot over here using pandas guys this is how we have created one uh, series using the random numbers from numpy library and using the pi plot we have plotted a graph for random values which we have taken from 0 to 500 and the random range as well so this is how you take or, or get a plot using pandas guys now last but not the least we have another topic which is reading and writing to files so inside this i'm going to show you how you can read from a file and how you can actually create a file over there so we have our data frame guys or we have our ts this this is our ts guys so i can just you know convert it to a csv file guys make it or give it a file name as let's say ts.csv and it's going to save the ts.csv file somewhere in my directory and similarly i can read from a csv file so for that i can just write pd dot read csv and i'm going to have to give the file location for that so i'll just copy one file location from one of my data sets so this is one data set that i have so i'm going to check for the properties or wait i'm going to copy this paste it over here okay we have an unicode error so i'll just write r over here and i'm able to read from the csv file guys look at this instead of csv i can write excel and it's going to create a excel file or a csv file it's going to read from so that's how we actually read and write from files like a csv file which is a comma separated file uh, basically or we read from a file now that we have come to the end of the session guys i hope everything discussed in the session is clear to you guys you can freely drop your doubts in the comment section to reach out to edureka community to post your queries thank you and happy learning